morning, good morning, and Merry Christmas, YouTube viewers all over the land and to the St. Paul Christian Fellowship family. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. I've been talking about the Advent season. I've been talking about Lent season. So we've gone through all of that. All of that actually goes up until the end of the year, really. And so we've, uh, we're celebrating still the arrival of our Savior, our Lord, our King, our Master. Uh, you know, we are celebrating the birth and the arrival of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I think I did a little bit on the wisdom of Christmas on last time. And so now I just want to do a little piece about your thinking. I, I wonder what you're thinking during this time. I want to talk to you today uh, from Luke's gospel, but I'm Pastor Antonio Woolett here with my trusted right hand, Deacon Carl Jones. We're at St. Paul Christian Fellowship, 2238. Courtney Avenue in the lovely city of Norfolk, Virginia, 23504. Subscribe, ring the bell, sound the alarm, let somebody know that there's an encouraging Christmas message coming on or share it with somebody. But we want to just bring the good news, the gospel to your hearing. And this is the gospel. This is the good news that our Savior arrived uh, in history. Heaven came down in history and uh brought salvation and redemption as a gift. God was lavishing gifts over us. And through his son, Jesus Christ, he, uh, he redeemed our souls. He brought salvation, redemption, and other things uh, to the plate. And so we thank God for his love and kindness. We thank God for him. And so I want to just share with you this morning a few words from um, Luke's writings. Uh, in uh, chapter 2 of Luke, verses 18 through 19, it talks about, And all who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. I'm wondering what you're thinking on this morning. I'm wondering, uh, is there fear, uh, uh, doubt, uh, disbelief? I'm wondering, uh, have you thought about the goodness of the Lord all this year since January 1, how he has secured you, he has protected you, he has blessed you and kept you. Have you thought about it? Have you, how you wondered, you know, what is going to happen in 2023? Have you wondered what is going to happen next in the world? Ukraine and Russia has been at war for the last several months. Um, really, Russia started the war. And of course, uh, Ukraine had to retaliate and they had to defend themselves. And so, but, you know, what's going to happen next? I wonder what's going to happen next. Will a volcano erupt somewhere else uh, instead of Hawaii this time? Because there was a volcano that woke up this year just a few months ago. Last month, I want to say, but I can't give you a, a, a direct or I can't give you a, a, an account of what day it was. But but a volcano erupted, are, are there gonna be any devastating storms coming our way uh, this new year in 2023? And what are you wondering about? What are you pondering? Because it says here in this text, it says, Mary pondered these things in her heart. And I, I you know, as I was searching and seeking the Holy Spirit for an answer, he showed me that she was just in awe struck. She was, she was struck in awe. I'm wondering today if you even think about God like that, if, if you ever have an awe moment where you're just in awe of God, where, whether it's creation, whether it's beauty, like the mountains, his majesty, whether it's the oceans, whether it's the sunrise or sunset. I've seen all of that in the Caribbeans, where the sun looked like a big ball, a huge fireball, and it sets down uh, beyond the water and it seems like it just goes away. But how many of you know that the sun never goes anywhere? It stays in its same place all the time. And, but it's the majesty, it is the splendor of God and I stand in awe. And Mary was standing in awe of what was taking place with her because she was probably in her early teens. She might have been a 13, 14 year old girl, maybe 16. I don't know, she was in her early teens. And for her to sit down and think about God from heaven, our heavenly father, would think about her enough to uh, let her carry 
the Savior of the world in her uh, womb for nine months and have the Savior, someone that she needed too. How many of y'all know that Mary needed a Savior also? Unlike the Catholics and unlike Catholicism, where they believe that you can go to Mary and pray to her and get your prayers answered. It doesn't work like that. I wait for the amens to die down. I'm sorry, it just doesn't work like that. Mary needed Jesus as Lord and Savior and Master of her life just as much as anybody did on this planet because we all fall short of his glory. We all have come short and we sin against the holy God. Well, Mary was the mother of Jesus. Joseph was the stepfather of Jesus, but guess what? She needed a savior too. Joseph needed a savior too. And so on today, I'm wondering what you're pondering. I'm wondering what you're thinking about. I'm wondering if you're humble enough to even give God thanks for just the things that you've been through, even the suffering, even the pain that you've experienced this year. This has been a year of affliction for one of my sisters uh, who has a liver condition and it's not good, uh, but we thank God for the fight because she's put on a tough fight. She's been fighting all year. She's still fighting, as a matter of fact, as we speak right now. And uh, I just stand in awe of God's healing and deliverance and how he can keep you, because God has been keeping her all this year. So I want to read these words to you in Luke chapter 2, uh, starting at verse 15. It says, So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Y'all call it the nativity. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child, which was Old Testament prophecy. And all those who heard it marveled at those things. See, they, they were amazed at what they, they knew about prophecy and, and how it had come to pass, which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept these things, watch this, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things that had been, had been heard and seen as it was told them, because this they, they, they thinking about this prophecy from Old Testament prophets that were said about in the book of Micah. It talked about a, a savior coming out of Bethlehem. You got to read the Old Testament. All the Old Testament really is prophetic and it's about Jesus Christ anyway. It's about the Messiah. Isaiah chapter six, I mean, chapter seven talks about Emmanuel, God with us. Him coming on the scene. That was 700 years before he was born. When you read um, Isaiah 9, it gives them these titles, Wonderful Counselor, uh, Almighty God, uh, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This was talking about the Messiah coming on the scene, and Isaiah was the forerunner for the Messiah in the Old Testament. And so these shepherds had probably heard some of these writings. They probably heard some of this stuff somewhere. They may have read it somewhere. And uh, so they were just excited, happy, pondering these things. It was exciting uh, to know that God was uh, God Almighty uh, was sending a savior into this world. And so in the 19th century uh, preacher, Charles Spurgeon says of Jesus's mother, Mary, after she had been visited by the angel, she exercised her memory. She treasured all these things, her affections, she stored them in her heart and her intellect, for she pondered them, which just means she was amazed. She was awestruck. Think about this now. I just thought about this this morning. It might have been a million, a hundred million people on the planet. I don't know because the censor took place after the baby was born. There was a census. And so, and that was for Rome and for Israel and for all the surrounding providences. There was a census, but I'm thinking that it was probably about 100 million people, probably more on the planet. Who knows back in those days? I don't know how they keep up count with us now here in 2022. But listen, so just say, for instance, there was 100 million people on the planet. Mary was sitting down pondering this idea that 
out of all the little girls that may be in her age, say from 14 to 16, that God from heaven picked her out of the bunch of a hundred million people and gave her the savior to carry for nine months. She birthed the savior into the world. That's what this, this whole text, when you go back to the beginning of verse one of chapter two, it talks about the birth of Christ. And so we're at this part now where I wanted you to think about things that God has done for you that are amazing that you have pondered in your life and things that are going on with you right now that you are pondering and you're sitting down and you're thinking about. So as we like Mary contemplate Jesus, let's consider what Andrew Murray said viewing Luke chapter two. Andrew Murray is a, a preacher of the 20th, 21st century. He says in view of Luke chapter two in the light of Colossians chapter one, he observed, he said these their words. He said, Jesus was born twice. His coming to Bethlehem was a birth into a life of weakness. Later, however, as the firstborn from the dead, Colossians chapter one, verse 18, he arose from the grave in the power and the glory of heaven and ascended to the throne. Yeah, he's back at the right hand of majesty. He beat death at the cross. That was the last enemy. He took it off the scene. Now, we got to die. We're going to die. But thank be to God, Jesus Christ has saved us. He's given us an eternal plan and we can be with him. And so he left this place. He ascended back to the right hand of majesty. And so think of this. The shepherds were willing to leave their sheep because they were interested in viewing the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world in John chapter 1, verse 29. The wise men, having worshipped the young child Jesus, returned to their own country by another route in Matthew chapter 2, verse 12. I'm wondering what you're going to do different this year. Are you going to do anything different this year? They had to take another route because Herod had asked them, come back this way and tell me where this king of the Jews is. He wanted to kill the baby. He said, so I could worship him too. But actually, he had abortion on his mind. So he killed every firstborn Jew child. That was when abortion really kind of first started in the New Testament. And so it goes on. After bowing down before Christ as Savior and Lord, we can no longer walk the broad road we once walked, but must go another way to journey home. Mary pondered these things. She prayerfully pondered these things and many other blessings and truths surrounding Christ's birth and then adored God for salvation. I'm wondering today if you even thanked him this morning for waking you up this morning, putting you in your right mind, starting you on the way, giving you the activity of your limbs, just for the simple little things. Got a roof over your head. You know, we're witnessing these frigid uh, temperatures here in the mid-Atlantic. It's like 21 degrees outside. You know, we're not really used to that. Uh, the other night, Thursday night, it went down into single digits. It's probably seven or nine degrees with the wind chill factor. And so it was frigid cold. It was a blast that came through here. I'm wondering if you're thinking him for having heat. A lot of people here in the Tidewater region, they lost power. They had to sit in the cold or wrap up in all the blankets. Was young, one young lady came on the news, said she had to take every blanket in her house just to stay warm until the next day. Her power did come on the next day, but I'm just wondering, are you thankful this morning just for the little things? You know, we take stuff for granted. We take life for granted as if God owes us something. He don't owe us anything. He gave us the best gift that anyone could ever offer. You in the universe. And that's the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. He gave us his only begotten son that whosoever would believe would not perish but have eternal life. That's the gospel. That's the good news that he gave his only one begotten son. And while he was giving us his only begotten son, he gave us salvation. He gave us redemption. He was our perpetuator. He was the substitute lamb. He was our sacrifice. He was our redeemer giving gifts, pouring out, pouring out his love, pouring out his forgiveness, pouring out reconciliation, bringing us back to him in a right relationship. He was giving us those things. This is the season 
to be given. And so I'm wondering, what are you pondering? What are you thinking about? You know, Mary, I'm, I'm quite sure she was just blown away. That would have blown my mind. I would have been blown away at just the thought that she was carrying the Savior in her belly that was going to save all of humanity, that was going to come from heaven into history, and that was going to redeem our souls. Right. He came to redeem us, came to save us. And so I'm thankful, I'm grateful this morning for you all and how you all have, you know, stood by us here at St. Paul Christian Fellowship all year long. It's been a wonderful journey. It's been a wonderful ride all year long. I've seen a lot of suffering, a lot of affliction uh, going with other people. And we have lost loved ones ourselves in our family and in this church family. But we thank God for all the many blessings, all the many benefits, all the many benevolences that he's poured out on us. And so we thank God this morning. What about you? What are you pondering? What are you thankful for? What are you thinking about? And I hope you're thankful this morning. I hope you're humbled this morning at the fact that he's allowed you to live to see another day. We're here in Christmas. We're celebrating our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, here at St. Paul. And so from the St. Paul family, Pastor Antonio Willett, my right hand, trusted right hand man, Deacon Carl Jones. Listen, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And we wish you a blessed and prosperous new year in 2023. We look forward to seeing you then. Grace, peace, and mercy be yours until we meet again.